You know something is deadly in the Star Wars universe when Sith alchemy is in the developmental description, and Project Blackwing is one such Imperial project which took reckless abandon to new levels. Following in the footsteps of Dr. Hemlock's genetic experiments across Project Slithervine and Project Necromancer, Blackwing sought to add to the already expansive legacy of the Imperial biological experimentations. In the early days of the Empire, Palpatine was obsessed with the success of Project Necromancer, and as a result, he would order other Imperial facilities to experiment with biological processes which could enhance the usefulness of Necromancer. On the planet Dandoran, Project Blackwing would receive a significant amount of funding and commence with one objective, to discover the secrets of immortality. To accomplish this, the Imperial Project leads turned to ancient practices, long-lost techniques and components derived from Sith alchemy. Over months of failure, unable to prevent the decay, the scientists adjusted their focus on the restoration of necrotic tissue, and in the process, unleashed a deadly virus upon themselves. Blackwing is no normal virus. In its early stages, the virus sought to maximize its spread by making the knowledge of who was infected harder to decipher. The virus would only activate after there were enough infected cells in the body so that the body could no longer defend against it, allowing the virus to secretly spread through the exchange of bodily fluids. Though Blackwing's experimentations with Sith alchemy mutated the strand responsible for the infection and allowed the virus to spread while airborne, a sufficiently infected host would decay rapidly, their skin turning green and no longer resembling their flesh. They would lose motor functions and their mind would deteriorate until their consciousness was no more, their body now becoming one of the many infected zombies in the air of Blackwing. Blackwing's final result can be described as an infectious gas attack, as the airborne transmission of the virus serves the grounds for its effectiveness as an area denial weapon. A strange effect of the Blackwing experiment is that the air within the infected environment actually sustains the undead, repairing any minor damage sustained to the host body. This restorative function is what the Imperial Science team was originally trying to accomplish, and it worked in this capacity, but unfortunately, the restorative nature of Blackwing's air only worked on pure necrotic infected tissue, creating an unstoppable army of the undead within the densely infected area. Luckily, any infected host not within the sustaining air of the Blackwing environment would die far more easily than those within, allowing outbreaks of the Blackwing to be contained, so long as the quarantine is enforced. This didn't save the original science teams though. In a dark twist of fate, the scientists succeeded in their search for immortality, but in order to be immortal, first you must join the dead. Once you join the ranks of Blackwing, you are hard to stop. The infected are relentless and hungry. What they lack in fine motor control and precise movements, they make up for with brutal response to threats and unyielding energy. Theirs is a force which will tear you down over time, as the size of their host only grows within proximity to living beings, including any who are sent to wipe them out, and without immunity, you are surely doomed to join them. That is the only protection someone trapped within the air of Blackwing can have. The virus can't infect everyone. Immunity is possible. What makes you immune? Perhaps a high M count. Perhaps it's as simple as having a luckily coded antibody, or maybe a certain gene. The first Blackwing experiments found the virus unable to cross the species barrier, taking hold and infecting primarily human hosts, though later Imperial meddling enabled the virus to jump this barrier and infect a larger variety of alien species. So maybe immunity isn't a completely permanent condition. The legacy Blackwing left behind affected not just the Empire, but anyone unlucky enough to come across it. Both the Rebel Alliance and the Empire have fought this infection, with Han Solo and Chewbacca having witnessed it with their own eyes in Legends. Though while this story might not be canon any longer, Project Blackwing itself may be considered canon once more through its inclusion in newer stories. After knowledge of the project became widespread, Palpatine spun the rumors of the unstoppable Death Troopers and created a division of elite troopers under the same name to accompany his high-ranked personnel, adding an additional element of fear to the already terrifying Stormtrooper. After all, you cannot kill a Death Trooper, for they are already dead. So Blackwing is the Plague of the Dead, the effect of poorly practiced Sith alchemy bringing undead into reanimation. But strangely, this is not the first virus Sith magics have created, for long ago, before the Rule of Two, 
Sith alchemy was used to create another similar virus that may have influenced the results of Blackwing. A Sith Lord by the name of Karnas Myr sought similar means to escape death and to achieve galactic conquest, a reflection of Palpatine's own aspirations with projects Blackwing and Necromancer. Myr created a dark talisman, one which would allow him to turn sentient beings into mindless Rakgul, a creature entirely under his control. But there was a deep flaw within his creation. Four sensitive beings were immune to this conversion, as were a number of non-human alien species, much in the same vein as Blackwing. Myr's solution was further biological experimentation, designing the Rakgul plague to compensate for the weaknesses of the talisman. The disease spread much like the Blackwing virus, through transmission of fluids and open wounds. The victims of the Rakul virus would go through a similar incubation process, then two days later, they would become Rakul themselves, now continuing the spread of this Sith-made disease onto more and more people. So, Blackwing is the plague of the dead, and the Rakuls are the plague of the living. It's amazing how similar these two stories actually are. Both projects are born of an aspiration for immortality, and both turned into a deadly self-sustaining virus. And worst of all, these two plagues aren't even the only way to become undead in the Star Wars galaxy. Visually scattered throughout this video, I have used footage from the Undead Legion in Ahsoka. While the stormtroopers in this show share a visual connection with that of the Blackwing undead, this undead army of the Night Sisters is nothing like the Blackwing infection. The troopers summoned during that Night Sister ritual are not moving under their own power. They are not individual undead creatures capable of spreading their condition to others. Instead, they are puppets, summons powered by an intricate and dangerous spell known only to the Night Sisters. It's a terrifying magic, and I do not envy the troopers affected by it, but it's not the same thing as the more virulent Rat Ghouls or the sinister Project Blackwing. There are a lot more Imperial secret projects we will be covering in this series. We've already made a video on Project Slithervine from the latest season of The Bad Batch, so if you haven't already, go check out that video and discover the genetic secrets of that plant monstrosity. If you like this video, consider subscribing, and if you have a project you want to see us talk about, leave a comment down below and click the like button. Until then, this has been College of Lore, and I have been Sam. Thank you very much for watching.